sorry, sorry, sorry. Welcome back to another episode of Scenic Fights, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Chad Vasquez. I'm Logan Lowe. And today we are breaking down two fight scenes from the film, Ava. The first fight scene we'll be looking at will be Duke, played by John Malkovich, right. versus Simon, played by Colin Farrell. And the second scene is going to be the fight scene between Ava, played by Jessica Chastain, versus Simon. Before we get to our breakdowns, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, notification bell, and let us know of any future fight scenes that you'd like Logan and myself to break down in the comment section below. Okay, ready to do this? Let's go. Let's go. Bam, it's right her. in the kisser. All right, charges him. Bam. All right, so we have a mouse situation here. He's punching. Okay. Yeah, nah. Uh, all right, so we'll pause there. It's 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 not that easy just to push someone off. So Colin tackles Malkovich to the ground, and he's mounting him now. And Malkovich does a weird mouse game where he's blocking the punches and then pushes him off. No way. I, I don't see that happening that easy. So what are some things that he could have done much better with regards to reversing that position instead of just pushing him off? We have a guy who's postured and punching. We need to get the hands on the floor to stop the punches. Here I'm being punched and being attacked, right? So this is happening. So to stop this quickly, I have to use my knee right on the tailbone immediately. Now, before he repostures, I'm going to now reposition my arms into a frame. I'll take this arm, bring it across the waist as a frame to stop my opponent from coming any higher. Now I can feel, for this balance escapes, we're gonna look at, there's a gap here. Here's how we're gonna expose that. As I connect my hands and create a strong frame so we can't move up, I'm gonna quickly take this leg and strain it to the ground as much as possible. If I can make contact with my leg to the floor, I am good to move to the next step. Let's watch this leg here, everyone. Using my elbow, I can start pushing downward and sliding my knee inside his shin. Do you see how his foot pops up? That's my target. I want to control that ankle. Okay, let's look at this. If it's a big guy and his knee is heavy on the floor, using this pinch and the connection to the floor of my feet, I'm gonna hip out in this direction while my knees go in this direction. That creates a knee lift. Now I can use my hand or my elbow to push this down and create a guard. I have a couple options here of which guard I wanna to go to. I could go into a half guard, especially if I'm worried about getting punched, where I just lock two legs on one and I get an underhook and I face my opponent. So the transition looks like this. As he has an overhook on me, I go here, right? I grab the neck, and this allows me to start coming up and switching the position on him. Another option, I go to close guard. I can hip out, get my knee through, and control the posture immediately to stop myself from getting punch. I need to pick a guard that will make sure I don't get hit, and I can start attacking immediately. From that mountscape, Half guard and close guard are two very common guards to go to, especially if we're dealing with punches. So he's blocking punches. Oh, taking the body right. shot, knee. All right, I don't know how valid that is. I'm locking right. the arm. He charges him again. Okay. And, and hold on, and dude just stands there. He just keeps staying straight. Right. Dude, baby, give me something. Right. Give me, give me like a stance, a leg in front. Like, just like stand there accepting it. Like he's gonna give him a hug. What's something that his character can have done better in this situation. Well, I learned the hard way through a mutual friend of ours, Steve. He All threw right. me very hard in sparring this way, is using a harai goshi to take that energy and put the opponent down on the floor. So we make contact, and from here, usually what happens is there'll be a bit of a, there'll be some walking because there's forward pressure here. And as he starts walking to follow me, that lift here, so just Logan going with me here, as I lift, I would come down with my body weight. That would have been an appropriate answer if Duke, Malkovich's character, kept getting under control within the waist, but he didn't. Simon just kept on charging, no setup, and Duke, just come on, baby, you just, you kept receiving that attack, man. You gotta give me something. Give me like a front leg in front, give me something, but he just right. kept on receiving it. So right. that, that was, I think, done poorly. Ooh, now that's no honor there. All right, so he's going for what's referred to as a bulldog choke. Uh, okay. Not the best way to engage a turtle. 
Malkovich's character is put into a turtle situation. And what I mean by that is that he is on all fours like so. This is where the fight has continued. Now, Colin Farrell's character, Simon, he is attacking Turtle. He decides to put Malkovich in this type of headlock, which is also gonna be a choke. And the choke is referred to as a bulldog choke. It looks something like this. Colin Farrell goes around the neck and starts trying to squeeze here. And I think he actually even moves his leg, I'm careful of uh, his hand here, in front to get close to karate here. Now look, honestly, if you get past the chin there, there is a legit choke there. The problem is there's nothing showing the rest of our partner's body. So the ability to like move around and possibly ro roll me over is, is legit, right? So that's the problem with this choke is that there's not that much control of the, of the lower body. So what is a better option in approaching an attacking turtle? Let's go over the concept of diagonal control. So for this diagonal control to work, I need to have my knee and my foot connect. Like so. That stops any escape of this leg. Furthermore, with my far arm, I can now go to far grips, whether it's the wrists or knuckles. With this control, I am very dominant. Let's go over some of my options here. First, the easiest one. I can punch. I can just, just throw punches here. A uh, UFC fighter who does this beautifully is a fighter named Khabib, right? If you watch his fights, he has this beautiful control of here, whether it's the arm or the waist, and just lands these hard shots. That's option one, it's the easiest option. Option two, we could go for chokes. If his chin's up, I could just go right into a one-arm choke. Hand goes as far as he can towards his trap. I bring my chin on top of my wrist, and now as I rotate and squeeze, I have a clean choke right there. Let's say his chin down, big guy, he's not falling anywhere, and we wanna knock him down to go into a better back attack. Well, we have an awesome move, a wrestling move, referred to as a power Nelson or a, or a half Nelson. So, from here, I put my form and elbow on top of his neck. And I kick my hands. And now, I push my partner's head underneath his armpit. As I do so, and I get him down, I can now start climbing to straight to the choke, or a seat belt, and I get my feet involved so I can make sure I have proper control, and which allows my arms to commit to a full-on choke working together. I think that'd be a much more logical by the way of attacking that position, assuming we're dealing with a trained guy. All right, so actually this, we have a, a, a rock versus a knife. Right, improvised weapon, okay. I dig it. Here you go, slashing. So what do you think so far? Well, it's interesting because Colin Farrell has, he, he's basically leading with his left, his weapon hand's in his right. I don't know why Malkovich did that. Okay, so now we have to pause here. These are supposed to be two trained assassins. These do not look like two trained assassins. These look like a middle-aged man versus a much older gentleman fighting with a rock and a, and a knife. There are so many problems with this that I'm just gonna focus on the major ones. So in this exchange, we have uh, Chad's gonna be playing Simon. He's gonna be armed with a knife. I am armed with a rock. We're in Manhattan, this is a rock. Colin's coming in with almost like a lunging straight stab to my stomach. Bam, exactly. What Malkovich should have done, he should have sidestepped and put his arm up as a barrier. And then note that now I'm in a better position where I can use this stone, slam the stone into his, in Colin's face. Bam, like that. That's actually not what happened. Malkovich comes in with, watch it, an elbow to the face, which you can see clearly cannot reach. And I kind of try to do, it looks like he was trying to do almost like a backhand, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. In reality, what does make sense? I have a rock. I have a rock. If you give me a rock against someone with a knife, I'm not saying I'll win, but I have a fighting chance. Let's see again, Colin comes in. I defend properly, right? I step out of the way. I put a barrier in front of myself. I have this rock, bam. Or if I really want to do the backhand, bam. I'm winning that exchange and the fight is done. You'll note as I come here, this is an optical illusion. This is what you think you're seeing. You're seeing this. I'm not doing that. What I'm actually doing, and I'm gonna face you right now, is I'm coming straight down. I'm coming straight down. But it looks like I'm hitting out because I'm sidestepping as I do it. So it looks like I'm going out, but I am not. I'm going straight down. So note, as he comes at me, I just move out to the side. This is a guard. So now, if he comes in now with that upper, I have this. Let's also talk about how Colin was utilizing the weapon. You'll note that he was just 
doing slashes, these barbarian slashes. That does not make sense for someone that's trained. If I'm gonna put my weapon out there and I'm going to be in danger, because again, every time you extend yourself, you put yourself into a modicum of danger, at the least. I wanna get maximum return on my investment. I'm not doing a one and done. I am slashing to another slash to a stab, to another slash to a stab, to another slash to a stab. I'm not going to risk myself for what? Just one lunging attack and hope for the best? No, if this is on, this is on. If we're in a fight for all the marbles, I'm gonna win all the marbles. And now we have Simon going after Ava, played by Jessica Chastain in this scene. All right, let's get into it. All right, so the wrestling for that gun. Okay, you know what, I, 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 I like to ask when the fight where how he's moving her right. very easily, you know, because it really shows the size difference there. And, and right. yeah, size and athleticism does play a role in the fight. So I appreciate that. She's very cognizant of the danger of the weapon, so she's focusing on it. Okay, she got rid of the bullet. It looks like she took the clip. She's using the clip as an improvised weapon, or should be. Okay. Let's see if she does. Nope, she ignores yeah, it. Yeah, and the, how she rolled him over, for, I don't believe that. That's Right. Okay. okay. All right, so now it's to hand to hand. Right. Okay, and right here. Okay. A failed crucifix attempt here. Right. She's already got half of it. Yeah, but there's there's no attempt there. And you know what? For those who don't know what I'm referring to, crucifix, uh, bag of troll, let's break it down right now. Yep. This part of the fight between Ava and Simon really annoyed me. There was an opportunity to establish a back crucifix, one of my favorite moves right. to do. Let's break it down on what that is and what weapons and options you have for offense. So we're looking at is a back crucifix. Okay, big piece, a proper seatbelt. Second part is my legs, and this is what makes up the position. It's controlling the far arm. In this position, I have two weapons, a choke, and I have an option to break the arm. Put chokes first. They end fights. So let's go on the option of choking someone from here. We can do a one-arm rear naked choke. So from here, as long as hands come to defense up, I managed to find a way to get a grip, like so, and pin it. And now I wrap around the neck, fingers in, chin down, pinch, and I go for that choke, using an elbow rotation and extending my chest. However, what happens is the chin goes down and I can't get inside to the carotid. So we'll now move into breaking the arm. We're gonna lock up the face first. So chin's down, right everyone? I now use this strangle arm to turn the face and lock up and hold it still. My far leg pummels inside, and now I have two feet inside near Logan's armpit, right? So I bring the inside knee towards the armpit. I bring the outside leg towards the wrist. From here, I hold this leg still. I can now widen my knees and bridge my, lift my hips up, my hip into his elbow. I'm gonna go very slowly here. So I pull the wrist back for more tension, I can even have my feet connect to a certain extent. I hold his neck still and I hip up, and that's all it takes to break the arm. There's a third option here. That might not work because my opponent might hip up to stack me to reduce pressure on the elbow. So when I feel that, I can smoothly take this leg and transition with my knee. Notice how I have the arm trapped with both legs now involved. Guys, now I can start moving to the choke with no arms challenging my choking arm. And that allows me to go straight into the choke with both my arms there. You can see from a back crucifix that we have three powerful options. We lead with the choke. Choke fails, we go into trying to break the arm with our legs. If that fails based on reaction from our opponent, we can transition to a better position, a full back control, and apply a full on rear choke with two arms. That would have been a far better option for Ava to do in that position, which she did not capitalize on at all. And I think that the issue that we're both having in this can be summed up in the two words that you said originally, which is missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. Even when I saw this, I immediately said, oh, she's about to do a crucifix, and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Malkovich holding that rock. Nothing happened that should have happened logically for trained people. Oh, going for the eye gouge. Man, yeah. Taking that glass, bam. Okay, so same same factor. We're seeing how he moves or easily given the size difference. Right, right. She takes okay. an improvised weapon again. All right, clocks him with it, makes sense. Okay, so jumping on top of him there. 
if you jump on a guy like that, I mean, A, it won't be that easy, but right. what's stopped from just slamming, slamming. down? Yeah, right. Um, that's probably not the best way you want to start trying to get the fight to the ground. It's just okay. like jumping on someone. So if we're looking at a strategy for Ava to control the back and take it down to the floor that leads right to a back control to choke, there's a cool move I want to show you referred to as an Ashi Otoshi. Ava got back exposure. So from here, instead of just jumping and tackling the neck, especially it looks like Simon's taller than her, is get a waist control here. I'm going to step around and get an extension of the leg between his legs. Notice how I'm hooking the far leg. If you train, you ever do this move, here's how you do it safely. I hop and sit in front of them as we fall to the ground. So I'll do that right now very slowly. Which leads to my second issue was how she was applying back control and how she made her attempt to the choke. Oh, she takes it back. Okay. What is she doing there? Hands uh, look sloppy uh, where they are. There's no legs involved, so there's lack of back control, and then he gets out very easily. So remember, when we're attacking from the back, we need hooks. Without hooks, our arms do too much work. They now have to try to control the opponent and choke him. It's just too much. It's not, it's not reasonable. And of course, if you're dealing with someone resisting, they'll get out. So this is what Ava did not have. She just had the choke, not the legs. Right, so that's the problem here. And now also let's go into her choke. Ideally, she went more of a classic version. Like so. This is, this is old now, because my partner can easily pull it off. Exactly, right? And now, with that one on control, it's hard to choke him, very difficult. However, if I manage to get my hands over and behind his neck, very difficult to remove that. Very difficult. And I would even argue that the extra position of my control arm Gives me a much stronger choke. So that's a problem. Hand on head, easy to find. Hand behind neck, hard to find. You can finish the choke much faster with resistance. This is another mistake that she made with regards to how she was trying to choke Simon. No hooks, and I would argue poor form on how she was locking up her arms around the neck. You know, Logan, you said, well, there was a lot of missed opportunities, and I think that really captures one of the major issues for both fight scenes right. and for certain things that I, I could recognize, suboptimal choices and nothing to really end the fight and progress in a way that made sense. So that, that's what I got from both fight scenes. I was pulled out completely from the storyline because it was so unbelievable. Chad's gonna be giving the grade, but I can just let you know that there was no legitimate weapons work whatsoever, not one. I think especially now, when we look at other films, we do see a now a new, I guess, standard of choreography that are actually very realistic and, and has been well researched on real fighting arts. So, sure. like, whether it comes to knife work or hand to hand. Yeah, exactly. It's a movie about trained fighters, about trained military people, about trained clandestine operatives, not just your regular Joe off the street. So, if you're going to tell a story about trained people, then it has to be believable. In universe, it is not believable. Yep. With all this said, both scenes get a D minus. Sorry, Eva. But I'm still a big fan of Jessica Chastain. You guys are great. Just, just, that was five scenes. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Thank you. As always, everyone, thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in training with me, my contact information is in the description below. Also, make sure to buy these awesome shirts and subscribe. Lastly, Leave comments below on future fight scenes that you like to see Logan and myself break down next. All right, guys, thank you.